The flotilla suffered its first casualty on July the 10th, 1944, when their leader, the Polaris, was damaged by a mine exploding close by. The incident occurred as the flotilla was sweeping in G formation, protecting each other with overlapping sweeps. At 0830, the mine exploded under the port side of the stern, and the ship lifted and crashed back into the water. Luckily, she only sustained minor leaks, but the port side engine and screw were damaged. The Nazi grip was weakened, and Paris was liberated. If it had not been for the part that Polaris and the brave men who sailed with her played during World War II, Hitler could have counted on prolonging his military dominance for years to come. Sixty years after the Peter Maritzburg's remarkable feats during the war, the wreck explorer team of the South African Navy returned to her ghostly remains in the icy waters of False Bay. False Bay is an exciting dive site for both the beginner and experienced diver. False Bay stretches from the western boundary of Cape Point to Cape Hunclip in the east, a distance of about 60 nautical miles. The bay curves to its widest point of roughly 22 nautical miles from Simonstown on the Cape Peninsula to Gordons Bay in the east. The cold Benguela current of the Atlantic is northward moving, unlike that of the Indian Ocean's Mozambique current, which travels in an easterly direction. The meeting point of these two great oceans is Cape Point. As a result of this contrast, the point, as it is called by local divers, offers an abundance of exciting diving experiences and presents excellent opportunities for photography as it boasts beautiful coral reefs with big boulders covered in kelp, highly colorful sea ferns, sponge and anemones. On the reefs, fish like Roman, Hottentot, Darcy and Stumpnose are common. In between the rocks and gullies, you can see lobster, octopus, cuttlefish and many other interesting species of marine life. There are also a variety of shipwrecks, dating back from the magnificent galleons of the 1600s to modern frigates, minesweepers and even an ocean liner at Cape Point. Although great diving is possible all year round, winter is the best time to dive in False Bay because during winter, visibility can be up to 30 meters, with an average of approximately 10 meters. Water temperatures range from anywhere between 13 degrees centigrade and 21 degrees centigrade. But there were times when we literally steered that ship with buckets around our necks when it get so rough. Um, you could get sick on her and uh, she, could, she could roll on a wet face cloth. At the conclusion of the war, HMS Polaris was sold to the South African Navy and renamed SAS Peter Mausberg. The Oscar-winning actress Vivian Lee, wife of Sir Lawrence Olivia, was famous for her role with Clark Gable in the film Gone with the Wind, adopted the Polaris during World War II, and she was there to say goodbye to the ship when Polaris was handed over to the South African Navy on September the 9th, 1947. The South African High Commissioner in London, Mr. G. Heaton Nichols, accepted the ship on behalf of the Union of South Africa. Commander Peter Breedenkamp recalled being quartermaster of the watch when the very beautiful actress Vivian Lee came on board at Chatham to say farewell to the ship and to its new South African crew. Dolores retained her name for a short period in British waters before being renamed HMSAS Maritzburg. But after representations to the Prime Minister, Field Marshal Smuts, by the City Council of Peter Maritzburg, the name was changed to HMSAS Peter Maritzburg. On the 21st of January 1948, HMSAS Peter Maritzburg was officially christened and dedicated at a ceremony at Maiden Wharf, Durban, by the Mayor of Peter Maritzburg, Mr. A. E. Hurst. The ship's badge was changed from the pilot fish of Polaris to the symbolic elephant of Peter Maritzburg, surmounted by five stars. It was not long before naval personnel came to know the ship simply and affectionately as PMB. In September 1953, 
The SAS Peter Maritzburg became the largest ship of the South African Navy to visit the port of Neisner. Her extremely successful visit was tinged with sadness, as her call was intended to mark the closing of Neisner as a port, and was considered symbolic that a warship should be the last ship of any size to enter the port. <laughs> 